So, um, yeah, no, no issues whatsoever. And just to um, possibly refresh your memory a little bit, uh, we worked more than once several, several years ago. Um, I was a member of the um, Collins Collectors Association. Uh, one of my friends, uh, um, two of my friends, uh, one was uh, uh, Fred, w, um, W1SKU. I don't know if you remember Fred. He, um, I w occasionally um, handled the Wednesday night uh, 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 um, alternate to Fred, and uh, there was a couple of other people in there that, um, um, that uh, handled that net. Um, and, uh, and Floyd, who was uh, uh, president uh, for some years, a couple of years, I guess, um, uh, W1RO. Was it W1? Gosh, <laughs> it's been too many years. I left uh, Michigan in um, 2006, so not quite um, 20 years ago. Um, what's that, 18 years ago, thir uh, 17 years ago. And um, so I still uh, uh, I, I still um, keep in touch with Fred occasionally with Floyd, and um, um, but I don't think Fred has anything that gets him on AM anymore, which is disappointing. He sold off all of his Collins equipment, and um, he he uh, and he sold off the vast majority I think of his Heathkit station so um, that was kind of a shame but you know he wanted to um, overhaul his shack and um, so I I certainly understand that but anyways um, so we had spoken on on uh, uh, on occasion um, uh, during those nets back in the what was it in the early 2000s, I guess. So, just a little bit of of uh, history. Um, yeah. So um, I'm running uh, this morning my typical rig here, which is an FT 101 uh, Yaesu FT 101 that I've uh, modified for AM, and uh, and it's driving my uh, Alpha 76 um, with about 200 watts of carrier. And um, so hopefully I'm I'm doing okay. Um, and the antenna is just a um, a dipole that's up at about uh, 40 45 feet or so, 45 I guess feet or so off the ground. So that's the uh, the station here. I do have a uh, an equalizer and a um, uh, compressor limiter in line with the audio, and the microphone is uh, Heil Goldline in the, uh, obviously, in the wide position. So that's the uh, station rundown. Um, WA3VJB, W1NB. Thought I'd drag my feet there in case Kevin or one of those guys might check in. W1NB, WA3VJB. All right. All right, good memory refresher. Thank you for that. I had some pretty good memories of the CCA first Wednesday AM night. The guy who modified my uh, Collins 300G, Jim Young, W8MAQ, was quite an active participant in that group. And it was his participation in first Wednesday night that I think it was my first encounter with him, crossing paths with his original 300G that he had tri-banded. I had an unconverted one at the time. This is about 1992. I originally got a uh, GEBT-20A from Armstrong Transmitter. Hey, Kevin, if you're listening, Jamie. <laughs> Brought it home, along with a second one that came from WUTQ in Utica, New York. And I never did anything with them. Because the Collins came along from a station here in this area. Of course, it's a much prettier transmitter. And then I, I came across uh, Jim, who had converted it to 160, 80, and 40. It's like, whoa, that's exactly what I want to do. So after a long process, uh, he had in mind some improvements in his design for the thing. And we worked out a, uh, 
a deal where I would bring him my unconverted one and pick up the converted one to preserve the effort that he had invested. And that's what happened. I've got number 33, and he's got number 22 out of the 150 of them that were made. And then he's kind of disappeared, too, kind of like, uh, I think, Fred. I, the, the calls didn't ring a bell. But uh, kind of a shame there, you know, as you point out, that you don't hear him on. But I think one of the great payoffs of my uh, acquaintance with uh, Jim is that he came out here to visit related to one of the National Association of Broadcasters conventions. And I was able to host him here in the radio lodge as uh, a co-anchor. I also had anchored the first Wednesday AM night a few times. So I put up a second microphone on the console, and I, I took the primary one. And we had um, kind of a, a dual talk show host anchored them, <laughs> and it was fun. I think everybody got a kick out of it, because we'd funnel the stations through with the usual check-ins and all. And uh, I don't think any recordings exist of it, but we certainly had a good time, including expounding on the virtues of his handiwork of converting the uh, 300G there, Scott. So nice recollection that gave me a chance to tell the, tell the story. <coughs> yeah, I've still got a little frog in my throat here, so I'm going to make it a little briefer than my usual old buzzard transmissions and send it back to you. Drag your feet. Let's see if the others might join us here. W1NB, WA3VJB. Is that holding up? Yeah, yeah, not too bad. It's uh, It's a great story. Yeah, uh, there was there was a lot of activity. I didn't get involved in the CCA until right around um, 2000, 2001, I think. Fred and I lived about um, oh about uh, eight or ten miles from each other, if that, as the crow flies. But we had not met, and I had been. Um, um, licensed to but um, not on the air for um, a good part of the 90s, the latter part of the 90s especially. And right around uh, 99, I got the bug to uh, get back on and put a station on. So I had been on <coughs> the air for maybe a, a year or so. And, uh, um, you know, propagation was pretty good. We were in a good point in the solar cycle and so there was a lot of activity, and one night I um, I heard I was tuning around and I heard this guy talking to um, a gentleman in uh, Germany who um, I believe <coughs> owned and and maybe designed uh, the OptiBeam, and they were having a good conversation, and it was uh, it was interesting, and and he had uh, the guy in uh, Germany had to go, and. So he signed, and I stuck my nose in and called Fred um, <clears throat> because he had a, a one call, and we were on 20 meters, and and um, you know, occasionally it opens up between New England and, and Michigan, but uh, uh, not all that often. And so I said, "Where are you at?" And he um, he told me, and I said, "Oh, you're just a few miles away from me." And we got talking, and I think this was probably about um, 9.30 or 10 o'clock at night. And I think we talked until almost midnight on the air. It was really interesting. Uh, he, he's a fascinating guy. His wife is a, a real sweetheart. He's got two beautiful girls that have all grown up now. Um, but um, they were very young at, at the time. Um, he loved to travel. Laurie and I, my wife and I, um, did a lot of traveling around that time between the late 90s and the um, mid-2000s. And um, <clears throat> I don't know, we just uh, really hit it off. And uh, um, we connected, and um, gosh, we ended up going to uh, um, Dayton uh, multiple times together, and we would hit all the swaps the New England, or not New England, but the um, southern Michigan and northern Ohio swaps and on, on a regular basis, and 
occasionally the girls would come with them and, and myself and my wife Lori and a couple of my kids who were teenagers at, at the time. And um, yeah, we, uh, um, we hung out a lot together and everything. And then th in 2006, I, um, Lori and I decided to uh, move back to New England. My mother was getting along in years. My father had passed away about eight or nine years uh, prior, and, and uh, so we figured it was about time. I had sort of run the course with my job out there. I was, uh, I was just kind of burned out, so I took a little bit of time off, and we put the house up for sale and packed everything and moved back here to New England. And um, it was probably... Oh, almost a year before I got back on the air, and we, we kept in touch on a regular basis, and then in 2010, uh, I, um, I I had an opportunity to go down to Georgia to help run out an operation down there and, and, uh, with a friend of mine, and we decided to take that and close up the house, and I did take my K3 with me, so I had a radio, but um, I wasn't as on the air as frequently down there. I had a set, I, I put an antenna up and everything, but I wasn't on the air as frequently down there. So, um, we, we, I wouldn't say we lost touch with each other because we still catch up once or twice a year, but not, not nearly as often. So, um, but he's, he's doing well, and, and, uh, when I'm out in Michigan, I, uh, I always, uh, swing by or, or call and, and meet, and meet uh, him and his wife for breakfast, so... Um, see if, uh, if, uh, Kevin or anybody else is in there. Um, if not, uh, back to you, Paul. W1NB. Kevin is in 3CXP. Good morning. Paul and, and all the ships at sea. Yeah, and I think somebody else was in there also. Good morning, Kevin. Well, yeah, good morning. morning. Um, this is uh, N3CXP. Hi, Paul, and uh, not sure where the other station is. Over. Yeah, hey, Tom. N3CXP. Good morning, Kevin. K2XAM with W1NB. Here's WA3VJB. Uh, good reminiscence, Scott. Yeah, I, you, you might remind me of Fred's calls again. I'll look him up in the card file, see if I actually have talked with him or not. That's kind of neat. We've yeah. developed some good friendships off the... Uh, the AM community in particular, uh, Gary, W2INR, the late uh, Dave Wanger, K3ZRF, Uncle Willie, W3DUQ, they, they're within easy driving distance of here. And consequently, we'd actually socialize outside of radio, and radio barely came up in some of our, uh, our time together. So I know what you mean about that kind of uh, acquaintance and companionship. It's pretty cool. You know, the wives got along and enjoyed each other's company as well, and we do stuff, so... Yeah, I can relate. Well, both you guys, uh, Tom and Kevin, checked in at about the same time, so I don't know who to turn it to. I think uh, I'm hearing Tom a little bit better. So why don't you introduce yourself in case these guys don't know you. I know you're, uh, you've are you been on here in the mornings. Good signal here into Annapolis as well as on one of the... SDR is it's helping me out with uh, Scott there. Occasional fades. A little more severe now. As the sun gets higher in the sky, I'll probably fly to Y. And then turn it over to Kevin there, who's kilowatt 2 XAM. And good morning. N3CXP in the group W3VJB. How copy? Oh, very good, Paul. Copying <coughs> everybody great. Uh, uh, Paul, you a little bit better because closer. So, uh... My name is Tom, and we're located in Allentown, Pennsylvania. I haven't uh, been on uh, too often lately, so uh, haven't talked to Paul. I think the last person I talked to was Paul about a month ago. So uh, we're running uh, a Super Senior this morning, and uh, an SDR and receive, and a 138-foot uh, uh, inverted L uh, as a half-wave dipole uh, that's up at about 90 feet, <coughs> at least uh, the current portion of the antenna is. So. Uh, Works quite well on 80 meters, <coughs> and a beautiful day. I'm going to go outside and do some work. I heard you guys on a little bit earlier, and I got sidetracked with some other things, so I thought I'd just uh, 
stop by and let's see Kevin you're coming in uh, quite well as uh, well I think the other station was W1 NV if I if I wow. correct so I'll have to listen uh, carefully so uh, I'll pass it over to you Kevin see if uh, you're hearing me okay I believe you're in Syracuse at least that's what QRZ says so K2XAM uh, this is N3CXP all right, good morning, Tom and Paul and Scott. Uh, Scott is W1NB Bravo. B-Boy. I have a hard time with the B's and V's and all of that stuff. P's and B's, etc. Tom, I almost think we talked, but it was probably a couple of years ago. <laughs> it's been a while. I'm pretty sure that we've talked at least once before. I think I was at the shop. <coughs> And I, too, am running the uh, the Super Senior. This is the 160-80. Uh, the 80-40 is over in the pile for those times when I want to get on 40, which hasn't been too often. And I'm running a uh, an inverted V here that I think the overall length uh, started out the overall length was 244 feet. My guess is it's probably stretched a little over the last couple of years. Uh, yeah, I'm up here in Syracuse, where I think it's uh, something like 58 degrees this morning and sunny. And they're talking about tomorrow that the high temperature up here might only be about 54 or 55 for tomorrow. Not fun. Uh, and uh, I'm doing you pretty well. Locally here on the uh, on the ICOM. In fact, I'm able to hear um, Scott, Paul, and Tom on the ICOM, so that's a good thing. Yesterday, I don't think I could have heard anybody due to band conditions and so forth. So uh, I guess it goes back over to uh, Scott. Uh, Scott, good morning to you. Um, W1NB K2XAM in the group. Hey, good morning, AJ1G. Good morning to you, Kevin. Good morning, uh, Tom. Um, great picture on QRZ, Tom, of you in the in the Johnson. <laughs> it's a nice picture. Um, I'll uh, I'll turn it over to you, Chris, in a, in half a second. Paul, uh, Fred's call is Whiskey One, Sierra Kilo United, SKU. Um, so, yeah, he was a, a, a very active member of, of the um, CCA, and, and he loved to uh, repair radios up until a few years ago, as his eyes started to, <laughs> to uh, get worse on him, uh, he, uh, he, he found it much, more, much harder, and, and uh, I think he still works on them occasionally, but not nearly as much. Back, back in the early 2000s, he and I uh, purchased um, a couple of uh, radios together and, and did work on them together. So, um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's uh, Fred's call. Um, so good morning, Chris. Uh, go ahead and, and pick it up, and, and uh, everybody is uh, doing okay here. Um, I get uh, fairly high noise level about this time in the morning, and uh, so I've had to revert to the uh, web SDR, uh, but um, I'm still able to, to uh, copy everybody uh, off of that. So um, uh, go ahead, Chris. W1NB. Yeah, good morning, Scott. I heard Kevin in there, and apparently Paul is in there up in Saratoga. And uh, I heard of Tom. I don't, don't know. I just uh, just got up, just made some coffee, and uh, got down to the shack. Yeah, beautiful morning here in Stockton. Uh, cool. A little bit overcast, but uh, looks like we're going to have a nice day. It's a, a la second lawn mowing of the week. Uh, I'm going to be uh, going out and doing that. Took a little uh, little short road trip back up to Sun Dave's yesterday. I had to drop off some stuff of his. Uh, we gave him uh, a big old, uh, well, it was not old. I think we only used it two seasons, uh, 12,000 BTU LG air conditioner, window air conditioner. We don't need any more with the heat pumps. And I had forgotten to give him all the uh, installation hardware and a little uh, instruction manual shows how to mount it in the window and all that. So I brought that up. Also got a new blade for the mower at the power equipment dealer up at his place. It uh, deals in uh, uh, the uh, the mower uh, brand of mower. I got the uh, oh man, 
Yeah, the old name Brock comes up. Uh, uh, <laughs> the orange ones, you know, the orange ones. <laughs> uh, and not uh, not Aaron's. Uh, oh, their Swedish name. Husvarnas. It's the Husvarna mower. I don't know if the blade's any really different than the ones you can buy at Home Depot, but. Uh, uh, anyhow, nice day. Got home late. Watched my uh, granddaughter play soccer uh, at twilight. It was very, very nice. Okay. Yeah, I had all a, a pretty good day. I'm looking forward to a nice one here. Let's see. I, I guess that uh, I don't know where it goes. Who knows? <laughs> Someone tell me. Uh, AJ1G. Yeah, it's um, um, Paul WA3BJB, not um, um, KC2CKO that's in there. Um, go ahead, Paul. W1NB. Okay, good morning, Chris. Hey, glad to see you found a new home for the window air conditioner. That's good. From the successful project to uh, re-equip your house with the HVAC units. And good morning, Kevin, and good morning, Tom. Both of you guys sounding good here in Annapolis, listening to you on the ITT McKay. There are super seniors I'm listening to, huh? And I wonder, Kevin, if that's a yet another super senior. I know there's one at the shop that Jamie uses, and whether you've got the uh, W1LO one or uh, whether the W1LO one is at the shop. I don't know if you were listening a little while ago, but I was reminiscing about the Collins Collectors Association and my association with them about uh, 30 years ago now uh, with uh, Jim Young, W8MAQ, who was a uh, fairly... Uh, active participant in the group as well. Uh, I was telling Scott about having met Jim on the airwaves as part of either his anchor dim or his check-in of the CCA first Wednesday AM night. And he checked in on the Collins 300G that I now have that he had done the craftsmanship to make it a tri-bander. And in a nutshell, I, I had an unconverted example of the 300G that we worked out a trade for. Took it to the Cleveland, Ohio area on the back of, in the back of a Lipton box truck, and then brought the one that had converted home. And that's been about 30 years ago now. So uh, Scott's participation in the CCA d dates a little newer than that, but it was fun to have Jim out here to the house some years afterward, and we got on the air as a dual anchor uh, conglomeration of the CCA first Wednesday AM night. And uh, Scott, you had mentioned Floyd. I guess that's Floyd Sue. I, I unfortunately did not see eye to eye with Floyd in the early days, the early 90s. The CCA seemed to be predominantly oriented toward the junior Collins models that were not capable of AM. And when I tried to uh, redirect at least some of their attention and promotional resources to the senior Collins models, like the 32V series and the older 75A receivers, short of the 75A4, uh, he, he really wasn't interested in and didn't do much to, uh, to receive the, the idea. So I kind of wrote the whole organization off, although, you know, they did have a hat tip to our part of the hobby with their first Wednesday AM night. I just went to their website, and it doesn't look like it's got too much in the way of updates since the last time I was there, 10 years ago. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I, I hope that those who are involved with the group have uh, kind of seen the light and saw where the original Collins models have stature way beyond the Junior Collins models that followed. We'll see how that had uh, sorted out, I suppose. I haven't checked in on their first Wednesday AM night in a long time either. Usually the next day was a work day, so I didn't stay up late to watch the rolling coverage out to the West Coast. I, I did like how they organized that, though, where each time zone had a different anchor station, and they took it all the way to California. That was a, a great idea. But, gee, the upper part of... Uh, where the AMers hang out has become so populated with nets these days that I, I just stay down here. I really enjoy this frequency and 3720 in a little while when uh, Dave, KA2G, 
Jay fires up with the group. And 3733 in the afternoons get a pretty good group going as well. And Tom, yeah, nice to hear you on. Super Senior sounds good. I think you, uh, yeah, you, you've had travel to New Jersey a couple of times in a row there where you'll then disappear from the airways for a little while and have to wait a, a few weeks to hang on again, so good signal. I think I passed it to you last time, and uh, I'll do so again here. It's, see a little bit of a fade here on a, one of the SDR nodes in Connecticut, so I guess uh, Scott might be having some trouble, and Chris might be having trouble hearing me as well at this point. But you'll be fine there at your uh, at your location, Tom. I'm sure. N3CXP in the group WA3VJB. <coughs> oh, excuse me, excellent, Paul. Well, very good. Be busy, and uh, in fact, uh, I'm going to stay around for one more, and I've got some cleanup. My wife's going to go out with her girlfriends and uh, and walk this morning, and I'm going to get my exercise uh, out back because this afternoon we've got uh, some other commitments. So I've got some projects that were started yesterday that need to get done, but it's a great time of the year, and uh, I've actually lost more weight just working around our couple of acres here than I uh, normally do, and, uh, and and we're faithful about uh, to go into a gym. And you're, uh, yes, we have talked before, uh, and uh, I know Jamie as well, and uh, it may have been through that, but I tried to get on the log with QRZ, but uh, <coughs> for some reason when I go onto the logbook page, it just starts flashing at me, so there must be a, a problem at the site, because I was going to go back and check, but I know we have, and I know uh, I've talked to Chris as well, I don't think I've talked to Scott before, and uh, Kevin, you got a great signal there at, uh, from Syracuse, and uh, being in the middle, uh, I guess I'm hearing everybody quite well. Let's see. Uh, and Paul, to your comment, uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I've been staying away from the upper end of 80. I, it, I just don't find it uh, um, worth the effort. Um, it's, it's just hard to have a conversation up there. So, uh, anyhow, this is uh, very nice, and I should get on more in the morning because I'm usually up at this time. We've uh, got some babysitting duties and other things, but uh, since we last talked, uh, we were in. Uh, the Netherlands, and uh, we're going to be uh, we're going to be home now for uh, for most of the summer. So uh, very good. I won't uh, keep this very long, and let's see. I'm going to send it over to Kevin because I think uh, if, if my notes are correct, uh, yeah, it goes to Kevin, then Scott, then Chris. So uh, and uh, <coughs> sorry about the call, Scott. Uh, I have the same problem with the uh, N3. CXP, it sounds like a B, so it's always, uh, I should have changed the call 40 years ago, but uh, but I stuck with it since uh, since I became a general back then, and uh, then advanced, I just kept the call. So on the group, let's see, K2XAM to take it. This is N3CXP. Go ahead, uh, Kevin. How are you, Paul? Um, or, uh, I'm sorry, Tom. Um, sorry, I'm dyslexic here and checking my notes at the same time and watching TV. I'm thinking of things to say, which uh, can sometimes be hard for me to figure out. I'm still hearing everybody just fine this morning on the uh, the ICOM 7300 that I use is more of a receiver than a transmitter. Uh, and uh, Paul, I just wanted to answer a couple of questions. So I actually have um, two of the super seniors here at home. Um, the original one was the 8040. That's actually a year older than the other one. That's a 16080. And due to spacing situation and the fact that my whole living room is a disaster area, um, you know, whichever one's not being used gets stored over in one of the junk piles. Not that it's a piece of junk. I think the thing is really great, but there are a number of piles of stuff around here that gets rotated into service over the course of time and so here at home we've got the uh, the two super seniors and then um, just last year last April I had made a deal with Warren um, at Nearfest actually we did the deal a couple of weeks before Nearfest and just met up at Nearfest so I could hand him the cash and end up with his super senior and that one got pressed into service uh, immediately at the shop, and that's an 80-30, so we kind of refer to that uh, 
but Jamie and I refer to it as the W1LO Memorial Transmitter because, of course, within about a week, he ended up, um, ended up passing away. Um, which was not his intention. I mean, Warren, I had also talked about, Warren had, uh, you know, at that time he had a pickup truck and also a car, and he was looking to sell the car, and I said, gee, I don't really want to buy a standard, but I'd be interested in, you know, buying the pickup truck. And he's like, no, 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 I want to keep the pickup truck. So Warren certainly had no plans on, uh, you know, disappearing or anything. I guess it just all ended up happening um, and, and caught us all off guard type of. Anyways, that's kind of the uh, kind of the story on the Super Seniors. And there was a guy at this past near fest a couple of weeks ago that had a Super Senior and it must have been an older unit because it did not have the knob for the frequency adjust. It had a toggle switch. And I would have bought it from them except for one thing, the, um, the remote connector on the back. I think it was a five pin connector rather than the, um, I think these are like an eight pin connector if I remember. And I didn't want to have to invent different jumper cables and stuff like that. So I'm going to hold out for another, uh, you know, 16080 Super Senior um, that has the modern eight pin uh, connector on it. And if I end up seeing one around at a good price, I'll probably end up um, end up picking it up and so forth. Um, anyway, uh, so on over to, uh, to Scott, and I've probably got another, I don't know, maybe five to ten minutes left in here, so I can hang out maybe another five, ten minutes. Uh, over to Scott, W1NB, uh, K2, XAM in the group. Hey, Kevin. I dragged my feet. I thought I heard somebody else in there kind of slip in. Um, or double with somebody, but uh, maybe not. Um, Tom, uh, it's ironic because when Paul said your call, I wrote down N3CXB as in boy. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we all suffer from the same um, uh, audible failures. Uh, um, <coughs> I, uh, my, uh, my right ear um, has significantly less uh, sensitivity and, and uh, hearing sensitivity than my left ear. So um, I literally, <coughs> excuse me, we have, we have a TV in, in our bedroom and oftentimes watch uh, uh, evening program when we go to bed. Um, Nova is one of my favorites and there are a couple of others that I enjoy listening to, but I cannot listen and lay on my right hand side because the, um, uh, the the sound just does not. I can't. Uh, I, I miss a lot of the words because uh, the high end hearing on that to ear is is uh, damaged. <coughs> so um, I uh, I too have um, some trouble with uh, differentiating between certain letters. So um, no worries. Um <coughs> My call was uh, prior to this um, was uh, and, and probably when uh, Paul I didn't even think about this when when uh, I was with the um, CCA when I was a member of the CCA and helping out on some of those nets. My call was actually Whiskey November One Bravo uh, instead of Whiskey One November Bravo. I had become uh, Whiskey November One Bravo in about. Um, little uh, 2001 I think <clears throat> and um, I would get on the air and people would always uh, reverse the uh, the um, sequence and and reply back as uh, um, to me as whiskey one November Bravo and so um, in mid-year 2006 when W1NB um, available, I, um, I grabbed it <laughs> because I figured if people were going to constantly mistake me for W1NB, then uh, why not <laughs> go with the flow? <clears throat> and actually, I kind of missed the uh, WN1B uh, call, but um, either way, it, it works. It works fine. So, um, um, and uh, Kevin, I didn't realize you had so many... Uh, um, 
super seniors. Um, <laughs> so I I think you're, um, you're you're buying those to replace your tuners. Is that is that correct? You sell off the tuners, and so you've got to have an excessive amount of one piece of equipment. So it might as well be transmitters. I I'm one to talk. I cannot count the number of radios that I have in here. Of course. Um, you know, I cycle, <coughs> I repair them, and <coughs> excuse me, and resell them. Um, hopefully, get them into the hands of somebody that um, that appreciates them and couldn't otherwise uh, afford to get into them. And so, a lot of a lot of the rigs that I have are are, are in need of repair. But I, <coughs> I'm also very slow to resell my my pet radios, and so I have uh, too many. Um, Fully functioning radios sitting on the um, uh, on the shelf that I really need to sell, <laughs> but um, <coughs> that's uh, <coughs> excuse me, boy the pollen is uh, is full bore up here. Um, I think that was all that I had uh, written down. Um, uh, go ahead, Chris W1NB W2GOR. Morning, Gordon. Yeah, good morning, Gordon. Always nice to hear your melodious voice in there. Uh, the W2GOR coming into the into the coffee class here, J1G. Yeah, very good, Paul. And then Apple sounding very fairly good. It's always a lot of fun. The 40 has very been very good at night, but we're still with more AM on in the evening, and it could definitely work, and you could make some fairly long-haul contacts there out to the Midwest, and uh, it'd still be good in New England as well. So we'll have to see. I actually heard uh, Pedro on, and I was, you know, always talking about being close to Pedro, uh, too close to Pedro here. I was really close to him. I was in Bolton, Connecticut, and he was in uh, Windsor. He was like two towns away. I could, could barely hear him at all. Uh, Kevin, I wonder if uh, you and Jamie got that email uh, of my, uh, in of, uh, of, of the uh, chat GPT's musings on why this why the Heathkit Apache is, is often called the Scratchy Apache, with takes on it by various uh, various personalities and, and famous authors and things like that. It, it was a lot of fun doing that. I'm actually cleaning that uh, email up. I'm going to do a posting. There's a, already a chat GPT thread going on AM phone, and I'm going to uh, see if I can get that, uh, that thing posted up there. So well, let's see, uh, I, where did I turn it to? Does it go to Tom? Uh, someone write the ship for me here. Uh, or maybe it goes to, I think it goes to Paul, I forget. AJ1G. Yeah, hey, Gordon checked in. Let's give him a turn. How are you this morning, Gordon? Okay, Paul, good to hear you and everybody else. Uh, been a while, I think, since I've been here on the... A 37 or 5, and uh, I think Kevin said that he's leaving soon, so I uh, wanted to squeeze in a good morning to him, too. And uh, and Chris, great to hear you. Everybody sounds good here. Uh, Kevin, you still around? Kevin is still around, yeah. Sorry, listening on a web SDR at this point because Scott ended up, uh, Scott ended up taking a fade, and Chris... Chris was just barely there, so I've got a little bit of latency. Also, uh, good morning, Gordon. Yeah, great hearing you in here. Um, uh, Ed, Ed, the Fry Guy, and myself were listening, I think, when you were on on Friday morning. We were stuck in traffic headed to Kutztown, and you were turning the, uh, the low end or the base uh, on and off and, uh, and, and so forth. So we were having a couple of laughs while we were stuck in traffic heading to Kutztown um, just about this time on Friday morning. So thanks for the entertainment, um, Gordon, and uh, always good hearing you check in here. And, um, and Paul and Scott, I wanted to comment on one thing on the Collins Collector Association. The, at this point, the only Collins gear that I have is I have, um, it's broadcast stuff, is I own three, uh, Collins, um, 26U1 limiters, and then there's also in the collection a 26U2 that's the stereo version, and then, I don't know if this counts or not as being Collins, it actually has a Metron label on it, uh, but I know Collins made them earlier, the 26J1 
auto level amplifier, which I think was Colin's answer to the uh, General Electric Unilevel or the gate stay level back in the back in the day. But I'm also curious if, if Paul or Scott maybe knows anything about what the heck happened with with Collins and why I've seen several things out and about um, labeled Metron, M-E-T-R-O-N, that, uh, you know, basically are identical to the Collins stuff. I, I'm, I'm guessing that those things might have ended up um, being made after Collins decided to get out of the broadcast side of things or some sort of thing like that. But I'm wondering if uh, anybody can shed some light on it. And I've been promised a 32V something, but I don't know if I'm ever going to wind up with it. So I, I may actually have a an official piece of ham gear at some point if uh, if if it ever ends up arriving. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not uh, not at this point holding my breath. That's for sure. Um, so I'll turn it on down to. Uh, on to Paul, and I'm going to start packing up and getting out of here, so you can certainly send it back to me, and I might be here, um, but give me a couple seconds, too, to wander back across the floor, and and also know that I might have some latency off of a uh, an SDR. So, Paul, over to you real, real quick. Uh, WA3VJB K2XAM in the group. <laughs> okay, Kevin, yeah, I'll keep it in mind. And uh, if you go with it from there, who am I doubling with? <laughs> Tom, was that you uh, checking out? Yeah, I must have doubled. I'm checking out here, Paul, and uh, hello to Gordon, W2GOR. Nice to, uh, to hear you. Sorry to hit and run, N3CXP. Okay, Tom, yeah, good to hear you on. Yeah, it was I who doubled with you. I uh, was listening on the SDR and pulled my headphones off when I started to make a transmission and then heard a little <laughs> way underneath. So then I unkeyed and you had uh, just unkeyed your own self there. So we'll see you again. And 3 cx having signed. And W2GOR having checked in. WA3VJB making a transmission. Oh, this will be my final one, too. I'm seeing the sun come up and the signal go down. Uh, Metron. I don't know anything about them, Kevin. That's an interesting uh, variation of the Collins product line. I was disappointed to read, and I don't know whether it's true or not, that uh -huh. Collins was quoted as saying that they, his company was known for communications quality audio and that they didn't really have to pay a lot of attention to higher quality audio and it was the quote was in the context of their communications gear not their previous broadcast line which, which I thought was fairly well regarded the Collins mixing consoles of course my own Collins uh, 300G uh, their, their whole broadcast line the 20V I, I just didn't understand the quote uh, but Art Collins was kind of a doer individual, not a lot of personality, at least in public. Didn't give off a lot of happiness and the kind of guy who didn't seem to have a lot of friends or anything, but he was brilliant, you know, one of those kind. So who knows the, uh, the true extent of his loyalty to the broadcast part of the business, Kevin, where he might have sold off that unit to somebody who wanted to continue marketing what was a quality product, and that might have been Metron. I have to look that up, see what I can find out about that, just as uh, kind of an informal historian of uh, the, con the Collins broadcast line. Heard somebody key up there. And uh, let's see, a couple of quick notes here before my signal completely disappears. Scott, understand completely about the W1N1B. I see, I just did it. And WN1B. I had a friend of mine in college was uh, W81NQG. Ed Murray, a physics master's degree candidate. And when you were able to get vanity calls, he changed WA1NQG to N1QG. And it wound up working out pretty well for him. But he was the first example of somebody who had a very similar call 
and uh, used it to, to either abbreviate or improve upon the issuance so that there was still some familiarity. That was pretty cool. Uh, Kevin, on the, uh, the shop having the W1LO Memorial Super Senior, that's cool. I think that's great. And yeah, it was a surprise to a lot of people that he had passed away, although it, I wondered, I mean, even if he was expressing his loyalty to keeping his pickup truck, I wonder if he, he didn't have a, some kind of a subconscious sense of something going on. I don't know. We'll never be asked. Uh, I also didn't realize the, um, I, new to my knowledge anyway, I, I know that they now have come out with a knob instead of a screwdriver adjustment for the power level adjustment. And of course they went to the, uh, the 1KC frequency adjustment resolution instead of the 5KC that the original ones came out as. But that's an interesting um, variation there. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm sorry to say that Bruce is very reluctant to tell much about the history of the thing. You know, I, I don't know if they have serial numbers, whether you can describe the production breakpoints when stuff happened, you know, along the way. Stuff that we naturally are interested in, in the progress and development of a, of a good-sounding rig. And he's just not interested in it, or, or just doesn't feel like talking much about production numbers or breakpoints or, or sales figures, any of that. Which is a little disappointing, but it's 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 just Bruce. That's just the way it is. Um, what else did I write down here? Oh, yeah, on your 32V eventuality there, Kevin. Good. Yeah, let us know. I've been talking with a guy on, um, on 40 meters primarily who has a 32V that he's still sorting out. And although it's a fairly straightforward transmitter, I'm able to tell him little, little things that are... Uh, interesting as, as he tries to sort it out, like those little trimmer capacitors in there that get dead spots in the frequency multiplier stages. It's like, oh, okay, that's good to know. <laughs> and, uh, yep, uh, from personal experience over the years. Uh, Gordon, I don't think you had much of a transmission there. Why don't you take my place in the, uh, in the rotation here? I'm going to listen out uh, by way of the SDRs and uh, anything else, but I, I will increasingly fight into the noise as the sun gets higher in the sky, and you'll be one of those who can still hear me. Uh, just, I, I see a few other notes here, but I'm going to skip it for now, just in the name of signal preservation. Take care, and look for you up on 40 meters. I'll be up there later today. W2GOR and the group WA3VJB. Take care, everybody. I'll be listening out. Henry Yellar. Okay, Paul, good to hear you again. And I've got to run to work too. This was just a quick, uh, just a quick check-in to say hello to everybody. It's been a while since I've been down here, and uh, sounding uh, great as usual, Paul. And uh, I'll just be listening here. There are some more people that uh, want to jump in here, uh, and I just heard uh, Tim WA1HLR. So hello to uh, Kevin. Have a great day. We'll catch up again soon. And uh, Chris, if you're still around, you as well, and Paul, and anybody else that's in there. Um, I don't know if that was actually CXB, like Bravo, uh, Doug. I'm not sure if I got that right, but hello. So uh, let me uh, uh, just turn it back to, to Chris and see if he's still in there. AJ1G, and you can uh, pass it around. Uh, otherwise, I'll throw it up in the air. Have a great morning, guys. W2, good old radio. Yeah, I think there's somebody else in there, too. Yeah, it, uh, the band is, uh, you know, getting uh, sponged up by the uh, D-layer here. So I think I'm going to be signing out, get some breakfast, and uh, have a bunch of stuff to do today. And want to get going with it. Got to get cracking. But uh, it's always a pleasure talking to you all. Paul, maybe we'll catch you up on 40, uh, either from the Mobile or the... Uh, uh, the home station here. I refuse to call this a base station. That sounds too much like 11 meters uh, for my taste. I heard Tim in there. Tim, go ahead, pick it up, uh, and everyone have a great day. I'm going to sign out. Uh, WA1HLR, I will listen out AJ1G. Yo, okay, Chris, I got a free tool here. Bye from me, W2GOR. Have a great day, everybody.